So guys, we're going to take a look at some of my handmade knives. I'm not going to be able to get to all of them. I've, got, I've just got them setting out here for display for the video, but I'll try to show you as many as I can. But I, I think I've done a video on some of these, but I wanted to particularly show you the uh, my prototype, the very first one that I did where I went, and then my second one is what I call the Snowtack 7.5. This one right here. So let's take a look at this. This is uh, this is my prototype. I'm, I made this in, in 2017, and these are designed to look like a bayonet, but they're they're not a bayonet. It's a combat survival knife. This one has the bayonet handguard on there to give it that bayonet look. But this is 5160 on the steel full tang 18 feet of 550 paracord and there's three holes in the tang and so knife scales could be added I hand fabricate that pommel end piece this is what I call a multi function pommel end this can be used as a pry bar we can break vehicle glass down by the mirror on entrance or egress and we've got point point contact there hand-to-hand -hand. so I've did and this is what I'm envisioning this uh, this prototype has kind of been one I've just kind of been initially when I first made this it had a hollow grind so I've changed it up I'm I'm gonna show you my uh, snow tech 7.5 but I'm gonna go to this particular model it's gonna have a really aggressive hollow grind down to a quarter inch secondary cutting edge so these are gonna really be hollow grind out right through here and so I'm in increasing the lethality of the cutting abilities of this combat knife. This one has a seven and a half inch blade. These serrations are just designed to cut through small branches, you know, one to two inches wide. So this is primarily combat first, survival secondary, full tang, and and it's a pretty cool knife. It's very lightweight. It's lighter than your standard M9 bayonet because we've removed a lot of metal. This is a, what I call a terracotta tip. It's a triangle tip. Very strong and very pointy. So that's what I love about that triangle tip design. So let me show you this one. This is what I call the Snowtack 7.5. This one is made with an EOD handguard. I get these from Mo City Man. So the next one is going to have it's going to have the EOD handguard, and I'm going to do this uh, more of an advanced hollow grind, or more of aggressive hollow grind down to a quarter inch secondary cutting edge. This thing is seriously razor sharp. 5160. This one is just a hollow grind. I do aggressive hollow grind down to about a 10 degree secondary cutting edge with your clip point. This upper swedge is also sharp, seven and a half inch blade, full tang, 18 foot, 550 paracord. Like I said, there's three holes in here. Knife skills could be added. We got the multifunction palm land. These are very cool knives. So this is my envision. So the last couple of days, I added this aggressive hollow grind. So I'm going to go with a, this particular. A newer model I'm not sure what I'm gonna call it I don't even really there's really no no need for a name for it because I'm not I just make a few at a time but I, I like coming up with names because it's just cool but uh, I, I wanted something more aggressive and just something a little bit uh, more enhanced there this is gonna get the job done as far as uh, anything that you need it to do And I canter my, my handles just slightly. And it's pretty cool. This one's stamped XM9 2017-P5160. And I've got my maker's mark on top. If I don't have any kind of... Uh, let me show you this one right here. Just like jimping up here. This one has jimping. If I don't have any jimping, I'll generally put my maker's mark stamped on right on top. Other than that, it'll either it'll be here on the side. This one's stamped here. 
But uh, yeah, pretty cool knives. And I just put them in a Durlin hard plastic sheath. I'm really loving this design here because not only does it take a lot of metal out, but it gives you that aggressive hollow grind. When you take that much metal off, it makes the knife really light. It, may, it increases the lethality as far as the cutting ability. I need to do a demonstration for cutting on this. You guys are not going to believe how incredibly sharp this, this knife is right here. All right, guys. And so, yeah, I just wanted to show you that. I've been working on that yesterday and today. Also, did some work on this hollow handle. It's a hollow handle that I've, I've uh, this was the first one that I made, but I was kind of still doing the grind on this. I got it down more of an aggressive hollow grind down to about a 10 degree secondary cutting edge. Nice razor sharp blade. And just put it in a hollow handle. And here's how I do my ends. This is another one that I'm going to be making. This will be shorter. It'll be cut about right in here. I use titanium bar stock when these things get inserted in here. And then they get cold welded. So they're not, once they dry, you're not getting them out. So this one's going to be more of a fighter style design, you know, on another hollow handle project that I got coming up. So fun stuff, fun, fun stuff. This one, uh, I've got to polish that up. I just, this has got to have some more sanding and polishing done on it. It's pretty cool. And I'm going to do another SOG, 5th Special Forces. This is going to have the SOG handguard, stack leather handle, nice SOG looking pommel in. Be really cool. All right, guys, so this is Assassin Dagger that I just did, 8 inch blade, W2 tool steel. This is rubber material. Exact type of material they use for tires on automobiles, very grippy. And I got a nice point there, very sharp for a self defense dagger. I'm going to show you guys some of these sometime. I'm making these spike weapons, and, and these are a, a little project I got going on them. I'll tell you about that later, but uh, yeah. So, hey, I appreciate you guys stopping by. I'll catch you on the next one.